What's up guys, this is Mike again with another video. Um, today I wanna talk about why the Snow Brawl video that iPhone put out a couple of weeks ago was intended to show why the iPhone 11 camera is the best camera you could get, but what it actually did was prove why the iPhone 11 camera doesn't matter. First of all, welcome back and thanks for checking out the video. Um, I should probably start out by saying almost immediately that I am Definitely an Apple fanboy. Uh, every day that I leave the house, I keep my AirPods, an Apple Watch, and my iPhone on me at all times. I use them as tools to help me conduct business, answer emails, um, that, and I'm just a fanboy. I've always enjoyed Apple products. I My first iPhone was the iPhone I think it was the iPhone 4, so I was a little late to the smartphone game, but I've had only iPhone since then. You guys can fight me in the comments. That's totally understandable. I do want to reiterate that I appreciate all of Apple's products for the most part. I really would love to get that new Mac Pro that you've probably seen all over the internet. I don't have that kind of money at the moment. Uh, I'm working on a Mac Pro 6.1 trash can for now. It's pretty maxed out, so it does all right. Um, but today's video, I wanted to talk about why the Snow Brawl video, instead of proving that the iPhone 11 camera is the best camera you could get, what it actually is doing is showing you why the camera that you shoot on doesn't really matter that much. By now, almost everyone on the internet has probably seen the Snow Brawl video. It was basically set up to show you great capabilities of the iPhone camera. I do think the camera on this phone is incredible. The thing the commercial was trying to show everyone was that you could take a phone with a camera on it and go make a really great story happen. For most lay people, people who are not necessarily filmmakers or don't necessarily know the full craft of filmmaking, what they would see is this camera is so incredible. Look at this video that it made. Look how polished and professional that this image can be. What Apple basically did was eliminate the camera from the equation and let all of the other aspects of filmmaking come into play. The biggest factor of which is storyline. It's a very simple, straightforward story about a girl having a snowball fight with her brother. Something super relatable, something all of us have probably done. It let story be the motivator of everything. It dictated all of the shots, all of the slow motion, every, every piece of how the the whole commercial is composed. And then after story, it shows you how important lighting and blocking and editing and composition can be. So essentially what's happened is they've taken a concept that could have easily been shot on a $100,000 camera and lens setup on an Apple commercial would be pretty typical. You would see something like an Ari Alexa or a RED with an 8K sensor and some very expensive lenses be in front of those cameras. But that's not the point of the story. The point of the story was that it was shot on the iPhone. And I think it really communicates two things. To the general public, it's showing how great the camera is. But what it's really showing is that the camera doesn't matter. Stories and shot composition and edit are the things that make people connect to a video. So I wanted to break it down just a little bit. This is not gonna be a full breakdown video. Just to display what the camera is actually doing versus what the filmmakers are doing. So let's take a look at the first few shots. Right there, we already have a shot where you see clearly the antagonist is framed from a very low angle. He's coming at the camera in a menacing gesture. He's got this snowball showing the potential of the fight that's about to happen. So regardless of the camera it was shot on, you already have one element of the story locked in your head. And then the very next shot, in opposition to the antagonist, you have the protagonist. Running very heroically in slow motion toward the camera. So with just two shots, these really great filmmakers have already shown you everything you need to know about the story. It's big brother versus little sister. The camera is gorgeous. The shots look incredible, but there's a lot of things going on here outside of just an iPhone camera and how incredible it is. This beautiful backlight, all of this atmosphere, this really great color correction. A few years ago, color correcting phone footage would have been nearly impossible. Within two shots, a little bit of lighting, a little bit of shot composition, you already have a story. Right out of the box, you have an emotional connection to it. Got a little bit of like a Japanese filmmaking influence with that little snap zoom, which was probably made possible either through a dolly move or maybe they just did like a digital zoom because this camera shoots in 4K um, and you were able to do that in post-production. That is something made possible by the camera, 
But really what's happening here are storytelling elements. So now you know there's an allegiance here. They know they're going into an unwinnable battle. These are all really relatable story points that are communicated, not necessarily through the camera, but through the camera work. It's through the blocking, the way that the director chose to block these shots, the way that the DP and the gaffers chose to light these things. Through all of these storytelling techniques, the heavy lifting of why this video is so great is not really on the camera. It's on all these other filmmaking techniques. An advantage of shooting on the phone being smaller is that you can put the camera in smaller places that a normal cinema camera that has, you know, the brain itself, usually very large lenses, wireless transmitting, audio feed, at least one, maybe two monitors right directly on the camera for the DP and the operator. And then that might all be connected to some sort of tripod or tripod head or some sort of camera support that makes these cameras typically in the 30 to 60 plus pound range, which when you're shooting on an iPhone, you can put this on a sled with just like a couple of clamps or maybe even just gaff tape it to a sled. The iPhone makes that possible, but really the genius of the storytelling is that those are point of view shots that show some like epic uh, shot or epic depiction of these heroes going into battle. Another huge element of what's going on here is really excellent fight choreography. I would assume at least a good portion of this, if not all of it, is pretty specifically choreographed in conjunction with how the director wanted to tell the story. I don't do a ton of action work. I haven't done it in the past. I'm not a super huge fan of action movies, but I do have a lot of respect for the amount of choreography and amount of planning and amount of blocking that a director will do with a stunt coordinator or a fight coordinator and the DP and the entire camera and G&E department about how to make the camera move around and tell these stories. Like two people fighting on camera is very boring unless you film it the right way. And there's a lot of really great choreography happening in this uh, video. Here's a turning point, which is uh, a very classic narrative storytelling element where we see the protagonist has this snowball fall into her hand and you can tell the tides are about to turn. Again, this is not a camera doing that. These are story. These are storytellers, these are filmmakers, crafting the story in a way that makes you feel something. The camera is providing a great image, but there's just so much going on that is so much further than just the camera. It's a great shot, a wide shot of her brother standing over her holding the teddy bear. It feels like a low point for the protagonist. I'm kind of surprised they didn't make it wider than that, being that the whole point of the, the third camera on the iPhone 11 Pro is this wide angle lens. It, it might've been really cool to see a super, super wide shot there. Again, narratively, what's happening here is you're seeing composition, shot composition. Her brother stands on the right side of the frame. She is on the ground on the left side of the frame and he stands over her. There are things that the, that type of shot composition is communicating to the viewer. This is a visual vocabulary that we have all been trained to learn over years of cinematic storytelling development. You see a frame like this, you don't even need to know the context. You see a power struggle here. That's a really intentional thing done by these directors and these filmmakers. No! And of course it was set up to show this twist of everyone being under the snow. Um, spoiler alert. Another great little thing here is a narrative and visual shot symmetry. These two shots show how the struggle went from a power dynamic being held by the brother to the sister in just a few shots. Most folks are not necessarily aware of all of the visual vocabulary they're experiencing and seeing when they see movies, but they can tell when they connect with something. And that's the magic of filmmaking is when you make an emotional connection with something as simple as a snowball fight, which is the real genius of this piece is it's something very small turned into something very epic. What the commercial is ultimately trying to communicate is that make these moments epic with this phone. But those moments are not made epic because of that phone. Those moments are made epic because of really great storytelling. All in all, this camera is incredible. The commercial that they made communicates these two messages. This camera is really great. That's the secondary message. But the primary message is, if you eliminate the camera from the equation and let all of the other elements of filmmaking stand on their own two feet under the, the vision of a really great director and really great crew, the story is what's important. It's the filmmaking techniques and how you communicate that story. It is very inspiring for young filmmakers uh, to see this type of commercial, not because it's you can have such a great camera in your pocket, but because you could go out and do this type of video 
very easily if you learned a little bit about blocking, a little bit about how to use your sunlight, and then found a way to cheaply put some decent cinematic music behind it, you could easily go make a commercial or make a little short story about something very small and mundane. But the important part is not the camera or the lens that you're holding on to, which I think a lot of times on YouTube, those are the things that become romanticized because they, they are super sexy and they're expensive. And that seems to be the barrier of entry for a new filmmaker is these $50,000 cameras and these $150,000 lenses. Like that stuff is great. And when I get the chance to shoot on it, I feel super lucky. Coming from where I did a few years ago, the first camera I ever shot on was a Canon 7D. And I just shot a short film on an, an Ari Alexa Mini with Cook anamorphic lenses. Like I felt super blessed to have it. But at the end of the day, I could have made the same film on the Canon 7D. And that's kind of the purpose of this channel is to demystify some of these filmmaking things that are maybe sometimes over, overly romanticized on other YouTube channels. Again, I have no beef with any of that stuff. I just understand that it's not necessarily realistic for every filmmaker out there to shoot 8K raw, red, uncompressed footage. That's not necessarily an option. This channel I shoot in 4K and I had a little bit of a debate about that because it's just more storage that I have to continue to buy. And my primary gig is as a filmmaker, not as a YouTuber. I want to take the the romanticism of the equipment away from the tools that are very important in filmmaking, blocking, shot composition, music, lighting, camera movement, all of that stuff is, I would say, more important than the sensor that you're shooting on. Hopefully this breakdown has been a little bit illuminating. Um, all of those areas that we talked about in this video, I wanna talk about more in depth with other videos down the road. I'd love to do an entire video about how blocking works. Um, something I'd barely touched on was the edit. That edit was incredible. That's a huge part of storytelling. A great edit can make a not so great acting performance or fight choreography look even better. All of these things work in conjunction with each other. If you enjoyed what I had to say and some of the stuff that I'm, I'm trying to talk about on this channel, click like and subscribe below. If you have any questions that you would want to hear my opinions about, or if you just wanna have a chat and talk about any of the stuff in this video, or give me any suggestions for, for future stuff to cover, leave a comment below. Thank you for watching this video. Uh, there'll be more soon, and I will see you on the next video. Thanks.